Okay guys, welcome back to another video of RoboCNC. Another video in the router build, the DIY RoboCNC router build. And today I want to talk about the controller. Uh, something that scares a lot of people is making a CNC controller. Uh, of course you can buy a complete one. Um, but, well, having this versatility is the thing I want. I want to be able to choose my components. Um, I've made drawings, I've made a part list. Um, if you want to download these drawings before I take you through the system, that would be a great idea, I think, so you can watch the drawing and see what I'm talking about. Um, well, let's hop in. This is the cabinet I used. It's uh, quite a big and heavy, uh, heavy one. Uh, of course, a nice sticker on it. A main power switch, so this powers on um, the system. And if you have a look at the first drawing, um, you can see that the power comes in, uh, goes to this switch after uh, a fuse. Um, and after which we have this on off switch to power on the system. So let's have a look inside. So for now, this is the overall look of the controller. Um, probably I'm gonna change things. Um, I'll maybe add stuff later. I still have to test some functionality, but I really needed to put this video up. So. That's why I'm uh, showing you today. If there are any changes in the drawings or stuff, I will probably not make a new video. I will probably uh, just go to my own website and change the drawing and the part list uh, and information on the website. And I will put uh, a line on there that there is an update with the date uh, stamp on it. So having a look at the drawings, I think the best thing to do now is download these drawings, pause the video and walk with me. Have we uh, seen on the left side, on the first page, you see the power in, which comes in on the top, first goes to a 16 amp uh, two pole fuse. After that, it goes to a main switch and this main switch powers on not the complete system, but some parts of it. The parts that are powered on are the power supplies, for instance. We see here that there's a, a small DIN rail mounted uh, 5 volt DC power supply, um, a 24 volt DC power supply and a 75 volt DC power supply. When switching the system on, um, we switch on the 5 volt and the 24 volt power supply and not yet the 75. The reason for that is uh, I want the system to boot up, but I want all safety measures still be active. So I do not want any power to go to the stepper motors or the stepper drives. What I do want is to power up the um, the electronics inside the cabinet, power up the sensors, yeah, things that do not harm anybody can be powered. Um, so that's routed to the main switch. These three power supplies are uh, carefully selected. Um, we needed five volts uh, to run the controller board. Um, so that's why we need five volts and we needed five volts for some relays. The 24 volt power supply is uh, used for sensors, um, uh, also some relays. Uh, so that's also a needed power supply. And we used a 75 volt DC power supply, this one. Um, reason for this one is to drive the stepper motors. Stepper motors, are uh, most of the time are rated for a current and a voltage. 
I'm not going to go into uh, a deep jump into stepper motors, but basically having a higher voltage means that you are able to run the motors quicker. So a faster rotation. Uh, the drivers we got are able to pass through 80 volts, 80 volts of uh, DC voltage. So we had to find a power supply that has less than 80 volts, but as close to it as possible. So 75 volt it is. As I said, these are selected carefully. Um, why? This is because one of the main issues and still the main things that I have to find out is EMC. So uh, electromagnetic uh, interference inside this cabinet. There's a lot of going on, a lot of switching power supplies, a VFD, but also sensors. And I do not want them to um, send out EMC to other components in the system. Still, I have to find out that everything's working fine. This video is not the, about the testing, but know that you have to find components that are rated or, well, good in the EMC field. It's something to take note of. Okay, the other thing that is switched on when we uh, uh, power on the system is the, the, the fan over here, which is a 240 volt fan um, to cool the cabinet. There's one here in the top and on the right lower side we have an inlet with the filter to prevent dust from coming in. So, that's all that's powered on for now. After which we're gonna switch on the main system with this switch. The green one starts the system, red one stops the system and the, uh, the white uh, piece is uh, LED to show that the system is running. If you look at the first schematic you will see that there is a series connection with the e-stop switch and this power button. So whenever the e-stop is pressed, the same happens basically as the red button on the front panel. The system is powered down, except for the 5 volts and the 24 volt, since those are not really um, an issue for safety reasons. What is, however, turned down, uh, shut off, is the 75 volt power supply so stepper motors are not going to be able to run any further and the power to the VFD. The VFD is a frequency um, converter uh, to run the spindle. We have the spindle I've shown in another video. Uh, the speed is controlled by this VFD. If we look at the second page of the drawings, there's a small schematic on how the stepper drives are connected. And you can see that there are five stepper drives with five uh, connectors on the top of this cabinet that are connected to these drives. So I have to check the drives that I have used are the Leadshine EM806 drives, which are 8.2 amps each and 80 volts. So 8.2 amps maximum current to a stepper motor. And you will probably see that this is not uh, a power supply that has um, uh, 8.2 times 5 amps. It's a 70, uh, it's a 400 watt power supply. Even though I am quite sure this is going to work fine due to the fact we are going to use micro stepping and there is not going to be 8.2 real amps per motor. Um, not going to go in deep but I think we will be just fine. 
So the stepper drives um, are digital ones. And the reason is I like the digital stepper drives. I like the fact that vibration is less. The motors run more smoothly. I have done a video on this uh, subject a while back, so scroll down our, our videos, uh, or I will try to put a link in the top uh, to that video uh, about the digital drives. But there's still one thing about these drives that is very important for me. They have stall detection. And I have not been testing it, so I don't know, know if it works, but basically these motors, or these drives, can detect stall. If one motor stalls, it gives an alarm output, one of these red LEDs, and then switches this first 24 volt um, relay. This relay then gives a signal, basically like an e-stop signal to the controller board and stops the system. And the reason I want that is our new CNC machine has two stepper motors that drive the gantry. I'm not completely sure what the um, ratio is, but basically it's two stepper motors of 4 newton meters with a 1 to 10 reduction on the gearbox, so that's already 40 newton meters, and then uh, yet an, uh, another. Uh, um, on the rack and pinion system. Not sure um, about the torque, uh, but I do not want the gantry to be able to go crooked. If one motor stalls, I want the other one to stop. Because if the gantry goes crooked, things can go out of alignment uh, or even break. So now if this happens, the drive will send out an alarm signal and stop the complete system. So that's that for the drives. Next page, page 3, um, we see that we went with the controller of Warp 9, which is the ESS Smooth Stepper. It's an Ethernet controlled board that uses Mach 3 or Mach 4. Um, why I went this route is because they are the first thing that jumped into mind was go with adding CNC. Adding CNC is the software that I use on my other machine. Um, so it would make sense that I go for adding. But there are a few points, uh, things in the software that I really liked about Mach 3 uh, for the router. And that's not available in adding CNC. One of the things is it's really easy to, if you break an end mill or you find out you want to do a small piece over again and a bit deeper, it's really easy to stop uh, uh, the software and find out where your machine broke the tool for instance. I can jog through the G-code and you see basically like a snake follower um, in, the, in the graphical user interface where uh, the end mill was in the G-code. So you can go back to where the breakage was, put in a new one and go further. That's not that easy in adding CNC. There are a couple of other things. Uh, also, for instance, you have a four axis system at adding CNC, but it's only able to run four motors. If you want to run five motors on a four axis CNC, you have to buy the six axis system, which is a lot more expensive. Things added up and I thought, well, let's just try something else. Then I thought about UC CNC, which looks like, well, easy software, nice, clean software. Um, the, like the driver, because I really, really want Ethernet. I do not want USB, parallel port, Ethernet is the thing now. So UCC and C seemed like a great option. But I've tried to contact the company for, I think, five or six emails in a, a few months in a row. I tried to call them, 
do uh, contact them by different means, but they just do not respond. And imagine that I have a problem. I have a business to run. When I have a problem, I need to be able to contact that supplier and get it sorted right away, which is, by the way, a great point for adding CNC. Um, he will definitely sort out any problem really quick. Um, so, but UCNC, uh, UC CNC looked fine, but well, if the company cannot even uh, respond to emails, then I cannot work with them. That's for sure. Next thought was, oh, well, then just go with uh, Mach 3 again, which is quite old software, but they also have Mach 4 now. I've not look looked into Mach 4 all that good, so I do not know if, uh, if how it compares to the other ones, but since I've been using Mach 3 for years now, and I still use it and it works fine, um, I thought maybe Mach 4 will be better and well, let's give it a chance. So looking into the different possibilities, I went with the Smooth Stepper. Smooth Stepper is um, a great little device that uses Ethernet, which is the best possible way to run your CNC at this moment, that's for sure. It's much more stable than USB and let's not even talk about parallel ports anymore. It has a lot of in and output. Um, basically these uh, big connectors are basically um, just parallel ports, D sub 25 LPT uh, ports. Um, what I did, I bought these cables with it and I bought three breakout boards for DB9 connectors. So now I have an input and output system of three DB25 in an output system. So uh, I have plenty of IO for a lot of time to come. I not even connected the third one yet. So, and there's an expansion port, all kinds of stuff. Of course, I will be testing uh, this a lot in the future. I have not done it uh, up till now. So. We'll have to see how I like Mach 4 and maybe I'll switch to a different system in a year from now. We'll see. Um, one thing that I do not really like about this is that it has a PWM, PWM, sorry, PWM output um, for controlling the VFD. And most VFDs are controlled by an analog uh, signal uh, 0 to 10 volts DC. So I had to buy a small PCB like this to convert the PWM signal to a 0 to 10 volt signal to control the VFT. It's Chinese stuff and the first one just didn't work. It was broken. I have bought a new one. Now I got a replacement. Um, still have to test still have to test it but it is over here made a small bracket to make it din mounted um, so basically this one is in between the controller board and the vfd to control the spindle rpms so next page these are the breakout boards that i talked about already all the in and output signals um, in the in and output signals, I, well, basically I have all the home switches for the different um, axes, um, e-stop, probe signal. What do we have anymore? Probe, e-stop, e-stop, uh, three auxiliary ports, um, the home ports for X minus um, one and two, Y, Z, and uh, a for rotating uh, axis and I placed two DB9 connectors on top to just be able to connect more when I decide to do so later on so last thing I want to show for now is this 
row of small relays. Basically, this is just an holder for a small relay. Um, the controller board has the ability to do a lot of input and output, but it, it is a 5 volt signal uh, which is not really usable for anything. Although these relays are 4.5 volts, so I can switch these relays with it. I can do the forward and reverse switching. I can uh, well switch on coolant or um, mist coolant or air coolant or stuff like that. Um, so these are all 4.5 volt DC relays that can be used later on. And 124 volt relay to use in the output of the alarm status, the stall detection. So how I've wired these is on the page 7 and last page of this controller cabinet. So there's still a lot of testing to do. There's still space that I can accommodate new stuff in when I think of it. So if you think of something and that I really need to build in here, uh, just let me know and maybe I will. Um, let me think what you, let me know what you think about the system. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section down below. But please do read the drawings before you do so, uh, because I get a lot of questions and I can really not um, talk to every individual about their system or modifying it. Um, please be happy that I share all this information for free, but do not expect me to build your controller um, yet <laughs> that's for sure so probably the next video will be using the machine um, still have to move it to the workshop and I think that's uh, the next stop so thanks for watching hope you liked the video if so thumbs up uh, share it with your friends comment down below make sure you subscribe and make sure to watch the videos that I show on the end of this one. Yes, thank you.